Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. And today I get to do something that I enjoy doing more than anything else, period, when it comes to my knife videos. And that's expose you guys to someone who's relatively unknown. That means, A, he gets some uh, good press, he gets a chance to show off the work that he does, and you guys are always looking for a great custom maker that does exceptional work, that doesn't have years and years and years worth of weight, or has closed books, you get the opportunity to jump in on the ground floor with somebody new. And today that is going to be Seth Taylor, and he uh, does business under a company called GDS Knives. And this is his model that he calls the Vipera, or Vipera. This thing is magnificent. And I had a chance to uh, catch up with Seth on Instagram uh, a couple of months ago, a few months ago actually now. And he introduced himself to me, and he says, listen, he goes, I'd really love to get uh, one of my knives on your channel, so take a look at my Instagram profile and see if the work that I do interests you and it's something that you may want to uh, commission a build for to have in your collection. And he only makes this one model. This is it for right now. He's about ready to introduce some new blade styles, though. But I liked it. It was sleek and it was cool. And it's got a cool name. And even though the builds that he showed on his page were fairly basic, you know, just standard titanium, they still did something um, that excited me. It was something that was shaped unlike most everybody else's knives. And even though it's slender, it's thick, it's beefy, it's chunky, it's got some size to it. And I said, yeah, let's, let's do this. He says, well, I know that you uh, tend to like more exotic things, so, you know, what if we do one in, in like, the whole frame of B. Timascus and this and that? I said, you know what? I said, I don't want to go that route. I definitely love Timascus. I'm a total Timascus whore, but I want something that's a bit more of a user look or user finish that has the Timascus for accents, just to give me some, you know, pop of color. So we decided to go this route. Now, what we're looking at is... It's a little, it's, it's right in between three and a half and three, three, I'm sorry, right in between three and a half and three and three quarter inch blades. I'm going to call this about a 3.65 inch blade because it's really going to depend on where you're starting your measurement from to get to the tip. It's eight and three quarter inches in length overall, and that is to the end of the lanyard opening in the Timascus backspacer. Uh, if you measured here, obviously it's quite a bit shorter, so you've got this extra area here. And by the way, that's going to be great for somebody with really, really large hands. It'll help fill up that area. And the handle is five and a quarter inches. So even though it's a long knife, it is slender. It's actually very easy to carry in the pocket. And the way he did the pocket clip, by the way, is very, very, very well done. And it carries really, really nicely. His price range... I'm sorry, the, the way the, the clip is made, it wants to kind of lean back that way. Uh, his price range is he starts at $825, and he, then he goes up from there. My build was $1,100. And i got to tell you right now, for someone that's only been making knives himself for about a year, this is highly impressive. He was kind enough to take all of my suggestions. Uh, I wanted the, a nice matte finish for the frames, but I wanted to have it done with a satin finish all the way around the edges. And he did a great job. Very light chamfer on the edges of the frame. Did that nice satin finish on there. He did the Timascus pivot collars that I requested on a custom-made pivot. Look how awesome. Look how awesome that pivot is. That's insane. For someone that's been making knives for only about a year, to reach this level of refinement, and look at his hand rub satin. That's about as good as any hand rub satin blade you're ever going to see from anyone. As a matter of fact, the last knife video that I uploaded was a uh, beauty done by Todd Begg, where he did a full hand rub satin. I'm going to tell you right now, take a good look at this, then go over to that video, and you won't see very much of a difference 
in the quality of the hand rub. Very, very nicely done. Look at his plunges. Clean sweeping plunges. What you may not notice right away, but now I'm calling it out, is the high satin polish on the top swedge. And it's a very abbreviated swedge. He didn't come in very far into the spine of the blade. It's just barely noticeable. He just, he just barely kissed that on the grinder to bring out that extra profile. Extraordinarily well done. Especially when you factor in that Seth is only 20 years old. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. He had a serious leg up because he's a third generation knife maker at this point. Uh, his father is David Taylor and his grandfather is AKI member Gray Taylor. He, and he makes art knives. Very, very beautiful, highly detailed, high precision art knives. And while Seth really has only been doing this for about a year, he spent his entire life, his entire adult life, uh, working with his hands. As a matter of fact, uh, his father, aside from being a knife maker, is also a luthier, which is uh, someone who makes stringed instruments. And uh, he worked alongside him making guitars. So there's obviously a great degree of skill that, uh, that flows through his hands to be able to you know, make guitars and violins and, and other stringed instruments like that. And he says that he was inspired to make knives because of the complexity and the science behind it. And, and it's a, they are a lot more complex than I think a lot of people really see. You know, I get questions all the time as I'm starting to make knives. I'm, I'm only making fixed blades and everybody's, when are you going to make folders? When are you going to make a flipper? When's this going to... Dude, it takes a long time to get to that point. All of the variables that you have to have under control, your lockup, your pivot, the centering of everything, all the geometry and the math that goes into where you're going to place your pivot, where you're going to place your stop pin, um, the geometry of your lock, everything, there's so much that goes into it. He takes it a step further uh, by adding the steel lock insert, by adding the pivot collars around an already custom made pivot doing a fully sculpted 3D machined Timascus clip. I love that center bevel on there. The beautifully sculpted Timascus backspacer. Hidden stop pin construction in there. And this thing locks up so solidly. Here's the other cool thing. Take a real good look. I'm going to try and get the camera to focus. There we go. Look how tight those tolerances are. Look at the fit of the blade into the frame. There is no room for error. Now you see how the, the obviously the blade is tapering toward the tip, but look right about here and back. There is absolutely zero room for error. If that pivot was off even in the slightest that beautiful hand rub satin blade would be getting scratched up on the inside of the frame. And this is where you really need to look these days because there are so many talented knife makers out there and it's hard to separate them. It's hard to say who's better than who and you have to look at those tiny little details. The fact that he is cramming that blade into that frame, not rubbing the sides, it's perfectly centered, and his detent is amazing. Very strong detent, but I did request that. So I don't know if he typically runs his detent this strong, but it is fan freaking tastic the blade shape is sexy as shit too definitely you know you've got that Warncliffe look by having that that flat edge and that nice slope it's more of a sheep's foot I guess but it's 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 a very advanced sheep's foot it's very very long and it's very slender and uh, he says basically it took about five months 
to design and prototype this model. Uh, his whole idea while designing it is he wanted to stay true to a snake uh, and keep everything very sleek and I think he did a fantastic job doing that. And while yeah this is his only model right now I'm really excited about seeing what he's going to be coming out with in the future. Now if you're going to place an order with him um, generally you're looking at S35VN steel, 6AL4V titanium and he does a multitude of different finishes but he's happy to work with each individual customer and do a true custom so if you say you know I want uh, Stellite 6K and I want uh, carbon fiber and Timascus and, and, and a bolster lock and then I want inlays around my pivot like I did here with the pivot collars and then I want uh, whatever for the backspacer that doesn't really matter as long as he can get his hands on the materials he loves to experiment. He wants to try new things and, and, and do really cool shit. As a matter of fact, when we went over, when I proposed my ideas for the finish and the materials on mine, I'm thinking, okay, well, this is a guy that's only been doing this about a year. He's relatively fresh at this. He only had maybe a handful of pictures up on his Instagram. So I don't want to throw everything in the kitchen sink at him. As he's building mine, he was making a couple of other ones, and he started doing crazy shit, like crazy materials and inlays, and I'm kicking myself in the ass going, shit, I could have I could have shot for the moon, and this guy can achieve it. And, it, and, and he didn't just achieve it, he did it exceptionally well. And that's what I love to see. I love to see somebody coming right out of the gate with fantastic quality work. All right, let's give you some nice close-ups from the tip to the tail. There's that beautiful hand rub satin. His maker's mark, which I have my fingerprints on. I apologize. Again, that exceptional pivot and pivot collar. Great finish work on the titanium. Yes, I realize my thumb is falling apart. Stop commenting about that. They're just going to get worse the more knives I make. So, sorry guys. It bothers some people a lot more than it should. And I love the design of this. Very angular. Even though it's all very sleek and then it starts getting, you know, very soft in the lines here, it gets very angular toward the back. And, you know, it's really hard to mix those two concepts. And he did it very, very well. Great work on the Timascus, got great color out of it, nice polish on it. There again is that light chamfer going all the way around the edges. So look at the Timascus backspacer from the inside. By the way, no rough edges on the inside here where your thumb is engaging the lock. There are makers out there that have been doing this for 20 years and longer that still, for some reason, forget that we play with our knives a lot and the more we disengage our lock and there are sharp edges on it the more it irritates us and the less we're going to want to actually carry that knife nice clean design to the flipper there's the other side of that pivot steel lock bar insert now it's such a thick 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 piece of titanium that I'm not sure if there is a uh, an over travel built into this or I'm just not strong enough to bend it further but it does seem to stop very well I'm not really too worried about it there again is that beautifully done pocket clip so all the way around uh, I, I have to say it's an exceptional piece of work. There's only one critique that I really have for this knife, and it's something that, uh, quite honestly, had I mentioned it to him, I'm very certain he would have done it for me. Uh, but he's another maker that prefers a rounded off flipper tab. So for me, uh, I would have absolutely wanted jimping or checkering right here, because every now and then, because of the hard detent that I requested, my finger likes to slip off every now and then. And because it is so slick and smooth, jimping on this would have just changed this night and day. Would have been a huge difference. So, Seth, to you, I would suggest change nothing except for adding maybe 30, 40 line per inch checkering or some uh, nice jimping on there. It's not too rough. That's not going to you know tear up your skin or anything. But, uh, I mean, that's it. 
So I just have to make a little bit more of a uh, concentrated effort on how I'm placing my finger on the flipper tab. That's it. That's, that's, that's it. That's the only thing that I can say, there it happened again, that I would change on this whole knife. I love it. Uh, he did put up some concept art, some uh, prototype drawings that he was doing on different blade shapes and, and blade grinds for this model. And I got to tell you, there's some cool shit coming down the pike if he actually makes those. So anyway, I've had a chance to carry this now for about two weeks, and I've carried it out of those two weeks probably four or five times. As you guys know, I rotate through a lot of knives. Very few, no knife ever gets every single day carry, um, but very few will see carry uh, more than once in the same week. And I have enjoyed carrying this so much, and it was so different from everything else in my collection that I really did enjoy carrying it. I love taking the, the doing the photography on it, sharing it with everybody on Instagram. Uh, you saw those pictures at the uh, beginning here of this video. Uh, I'm just very, 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 very impressed with this maker. He was very easy to work with. He really just wanted to make me happy as a customer. And I have a feeling he's going to be like that with everybody. So if you're looking for someone that's relatively new to the game, but is not manufacturing, or excuse me, not making, he's not manufacturing, it's not a production knife, um, that he's not making a knife that you would expect from a newcomer, this is the way to go. Just fan-freaking-tastic. I couldn't be any happier. Uh, I will absolutely be coming back to him in the future on future models and... Uh, Fuck yeah, I'm going to challenge him just a little bit more because it's, <laughs> it is abundantly clear that he can handle it. And, you know, that was me. That was me holding it back, going, oh, well, let's just do this. Let's just, you know, let's just be blasted and do a light tumble and then we'll do a, maybe a hand rub satin because he was going to go full tilt on the blade. I'm like, nah, because here I am thinking, okay, here's somebody that's pretty new to this. I don't know. He starts getting into mirror polish blades and stuff and uh, I, I've just been there too many times. I've had too many junior knife makers you know, put a knife in my hands and holy shit, the finish work, it just wasn't ready for prime time. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to paint him into that corner. And now I see from looking at his other projects, holy shit, I way underestimated him. His, his, his attention to detail is there. He's spending a lot of time making these knives and quite honestly, making them pretty damn near flawless. I mean, I'm not really picking up on any major flaws or even slight flaws on this knife and for someone who is as particular as I am that says something if you're wondering about the package uh, he does put his knives into a nice Maxpedition case so you've got that soft uh, kind of sheepskin lining in there and uh, you know nothing uh, crazy but these little bastards are expensive uh, I'm not even doing this for the knives that I'm making. I mean, I start looking at the prices of what all this stuff costs, and yowza! Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? There's a difference between you know a three, four hundred dollar knife and an eight hundred or a thousand dollar knife. So if you're spending a thousand bucks, yeah, uh, you'd certainly expect to get nice packaging like that. So that's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to put down in the comments below his Instagram and his email and how you can get a hold of him. I would highly suggest doing it sooner rather. Other than later, we've seen a lot of times when I brought out either new makers or just makers that uh, maybe people weren't familiar with. You know, guys like Steve Skiff, uh, who has been doing this for a long time, but very few people knew who he was. And when people saw the incredible skill that he had, well, he immediately jumped to a three-year wait. Immediately, almost overnight. You saw it with Frank Fisher, if you follow my channel long enough, you know, four years ago. Uh, he went from being, you know, a month out to four to five years, then closing his books. Now you can't even get a knife, and, you know, they're, they're not two, three thousand dollars anymore. They're eight, ten thousand dollars. So it would always benefit you greatly that if you see a newer maker or a not yet popular maker here on my channel and you're impressed by the work, even if you mute what I'm saying, and you just look at the knife and you're like, holy shit, I like that, you should jump on it as quickly as you can before that wait list builds. I'm excited to see what the future brings for young Seth. Uh, I'm very, very grateful to have had the opportunity to do this and to, uh, and to have this beauty in my collection because this really is a far cry from anything else, design-wise, shape-wise, uh, everything else from the other knives in my collection. Very happy to have it, and I hope you guys feel the same way if you get one for yourself.